Welcome to Kenny Quest First Ride, where I test ride motorcycles I've never ridden before in the hopes that I find the perfect motorcycle for me. This time, I am riding a 2023 Lowrider ST. The Lowrider ST is a weekend escape machine, an American V-twin sport touring bike for the rider who digs clean styling and craze performance. Its compact profile in comparison to Harley's full-size touring motorcycles not only adds to its overall aesthetics, but also improves maneuverability, allowing riders to confidently navigate through city streets or tackle winding country roads. The Harley-Davidson Lowrider ST is a powerful and sleek motorcycle in Harley-Davidson's soft tail family. It is built with a muscular and aggressive design featuring blacked out components, a low slung saddle, frame mounted fairing, detachable luggage system, and a compact profile. Equipped with the Milwaukee 8117 engine, the largest factory offering for a soft tail model, the FX LRST has arguably HD's best handling and stability thanks to its high performance hydraulic adjustable rear suspension and front inverted forks. Braking performance is supported by dual disc brakes up front and a single disc in the rear. It comes equipped with a 2 into 2 shotgun exhaust, halogen indicators, LED tail light, and mid-position foot placement controls. With minimal technology, comfortable ergonomics, and a distinctive Harley-Davidson style, the Lowrider ST offers a thrilling riding experience for Harley-Davidson enthusiasts. All right, guys, on the Lowrider ST, finally get a chance to take it on the road, and we are checking this out. So basically you got the same gauge clamp as you get on the soft tail standard in the Street Bob and they carried it through into the Lowrider ST. I'm a little bit more fan of the Lowrider S with the round gauge, but you get all the information that you would get on the Lowrider S, but just in a different way. You got your mileage, your trip A, your trip B, your remaining miles before you run the gas, and your clock. And everything's controlled by this little toggle button here. You got your horn. You got your left indicator, you got your right indicator, you got your flash to pass, high beams, and cruise control. This is a tour in the soft tail frame, so you want to have cruise control for sure. And we got our hazards, and we got our engine start run buttons. Preload adjustable up here on the front, and we get the adjustable preload in the back. Vivid black paint with the Stranger Things font, which I love, and gold accents. Single fuel cap here. This is the tank bib. Before they had the gauge in the 2020 models and earlier, 2021 models and earlier, you had the gauges right here. You had your speed on your attack. Got rid of that, put this in, and uh, they left this little hex bolt here. I wish they would make a cover that would just stick into that hole and then it would say HD on it or something. It just looks unfinished to me. But the story on this bike is the fairing. As you can see, we have a tunnel right here to get let a little bit of air in. There's no door, so you, that's always operational. The fairing is fixed to the frame, so it's not going to move with you like you would with a windscreen on your Softail Heritage. So that's going to be a little odd for me. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> you got these little extra wind deflectors here, which is kind of cool. Uh, first time I'm noticing that. I like how that will assist a little bit of the air. Now the controls are probably going to be like the Lowrider S, we'll find out soon, but they're going to be a little bit higher up. This is your air sucker air cleaner, and uh, on the Lowrider S when I test rode that, the low sucker air cleaner did not get in my way, so uh, we'll see how it goes on this one. Alright, been looking forward to this demo for quite a while. I like the responsiveness on the Lowrider S, just the controls are a little bit higher than I'm used to. And then the Milwaukee 8, it seems like you really got to give it a little bit of the beans going off on the first gear from a stop. I stalled a couple times in previous demo runs. Just with my feet on the ground, firmly planted, 32 inch inseam, 6 foot tall, light knee bend, feet are flat on the ground. Yeah, that dude's got some road rash or he got some fresh ink. <laughs> Good clutch feel at low speeds. Very balanced. Confirm clutch into second. I like that feel. Handlebars are good. I mean, they're, they seem to be a little bit closer than the Lowrider S, but that could just be me. 
And I've learned that clutch feel since my last demo on the street bob. Oh yeah, look at that turn. Oh, this is great. Give it the beans a little bit. Nice. Excellent engine braking. Good lean, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that feels so good. A lot better than the Lowrider S. I <laughs> know it's the same bike. I don't know. This is nice. Seat feels a little bit more enveloping, meaning that it's giving me lumbar support in the back. It's got that little bump there. Curious to see if I give it the beans, it'll hold me in a little bit better than the street bob seat did. Yeah, just lean and go. It's like I'm in the back of the pack. Yeah, so my feet are up a little bit higher than my Air 83 and the street bob. And that's so you can get the lean angle that Harley is promoting this bike to do performance touring. So the wind at 40 miles per hour, just initial buffeting answer, was just at the top of my helmet. We'll see when we uh, give it the beans how it does otherwise. Gearbox, very smooth at low cruising speeds. Click it down in a second. But uh, without an exhaust, it has that sewing machine sound. It's corked. But like most of us who have Harley Davidsons, one of the first things we do is get an exhaust. The distance between the foot peg and the clutch, the upshift, is a little bit broader than my Iron 83 and my Softail Heritage. I have a 96 FLSTN Softail Heritage Special. So I wonder if that that probably could be adjusted but I'm really digging the balance that you have at slow speeds with this bike very very stable much more stable than my Softail Heritage at low speeds but this bike it feels very very good I feel very at home and comfortable on this bike And the fairing is just there. I'm not getting freaked out by the fact it doesn't move at the wheel. It just doesn't even come into my mind. You would think like this and the road glide would give you that kind of feeling, but no. Yep, so we're up uh, 60 miles per hour. A little bit of wind buffeting at the top of my helmet. I can, I can hear it, but outside of that, Everything's off my chest. And of course, you can get a little taller windscreen on this if you wanted to out of the Harley Parts catalog or a third party like Clockworks. Good company. Look at that turn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Let's go. That's nice. That was good. Engine responsiveness is great. It's got this little vibey feeling that you get around 3,000, 3,400 before you shift into the next gear, which I like. And then once you shift into the next gear and your, your RPMs drop, it's very smooth. But I feel really confident inspired in these corners. This is fantastic. I mean, it's living in the corner. It loves it.
And this fairing, like I said, it's doing a good job keeping the wind off my chest. It's like it's not even there. It's just at the top of my helmet a little bit. I'm six foot tall. But because of that, it feels a little bit noisier than the Lowrider S where the wind hits me below my chin. So I would definitely be interested in a little bit taller windshield or a shorter one. Definitely a two finger clutch and brake situation for me that's the most comfortable. Having a finger full of clutch and brake it just stretches out the makes it a little bit uncomfortable because the grips are a little bit thinner than I'm accustomed to than my Vans grips or my Dominion grips on my Iron 83. But yeah, this, this feels like I can crunch some miles. I would definitely, for my needs, go with the ST over the S. If everything was equal and there was no money to be considered. It's, it's not the same price. It's, a, it's several thousand dollars more. But it's a complete bike, minus the exhaust and a cam. It's got the bags, it's got the fairing and crunch the miles. All right, let's drop the gear and take these corners. Yeah, it's nice. That's lovely. <laughs> That's awesome. It takes the corners so good. Another opportunity for some speed. more if it was there yeah I take it but out of the box yeah and the thing about the speed it's like you know I have an 83 two big inch Evo and, and I feel that visceral feeling when you're accelerating through the gears what's this it, this is a lot smoother and you get this speed a lot quicker and that's a cool experience it's kind of like a sport cruising experience oh yeah Taking these corners are just beautiful. One last chance to give it the beans. Ooh, yeah, I got the rear end sideways when I downshift, so ABS must be deactivated. But I kind of like doing that, that's fun. <laughs> so something I learned about ABS during this ride, the ABS is on at all times. However, ABS cannot prevent lockup of the rear wheel due to engine braking, and that's what I just experienced. And I wanted to clarify that comment for y'all. Yeah, I'd highly recommend that you uh, go see your Harley dealer anytime they have a demo day available. No salesmen coming to bug you, it's just you and the factory people and really no pressure at all to purchase, just experience. You know, this is me prematurely downshifting again. But this is a great bike. This and the Heritage, basically almost a very, very similar bikes for touring, like touring on a soft tail chassis the same shock in the back so I'd recommend those two if you like this style of bike all right 2023 lowrider ST there's the bags pretty freaking awesome there quick detach you can take them off and move them around wherever you need to but uh, let's go in for my my final thoughts on this awesome bike all right final thoughts on the lowrider ST it is a great bike but it's not perfect <laughs> there are some things 
that I don't like about it. Uh, I think they fell short on the display. I think choosing the street bob and fat bob display in the handlebars for this model was not the correct choice. They should have kept with the lowrider S display at a minimum and used that display. What I'd like to see them do is just like they did with the FXRs and the FXDs back in the day is the separate tack and separate speedo gauge on the handlebar. Most of us ride with full face helmets. It's just a natural that we have the display right in front of us. And this small display, I think is, it's it's hard to read when you're going at speed. You want to keep your eyes on the road. It's too small. Why in 2023, Harley Davidson is, is like the last manufacturer to not provide LED indicators. We're still getting halogen bulbs on the indicators and they need to be LED. I talked about it in the video. One of my pet peeves is on the tank bib. They have this exposed hex screw. Harley Davidson will put their logo on anything and sell it for a dollar. This is just one opportunity that they're missing where they can put something on their website that you can order for 20 bucks that will fit right in that hole. It's something that I would see constantly because it's in front of me and it just looks unfinished. The two into two shotgun exhaust, I think needs to come from the factory as a two into one, just like it did with the Sport Glide. This motorcycle replaced the Sport Glide here in the United States. The Sport Glide, no one bought it because of the Batwing fairing and the forward controls, and, and this is the solution to that. The Sport Glide's still available in Europe and Australia. It's a big seller in those areas. So to come from the factory with a two into one in either black or bronze, I'd like to see that. Chrome levers, why Harley Davidson are you putting chrome levers when the whole bike is blacked out? It, this doesn't make sense. This just doesn't make sense. Is there a shortage of black paint in the world where you had to go to chrome? Perhaps, I don't know. What I like about the motorcycle is the fairing. It does a great job. It gives a cool, aggressive look, and it gives you that opportunity to give you that FXR look on a modern bike. It does handle extremely well, but a lot of those attributes are also available on other motorcycles in the soft tail line, such as the Heritage. But if you don't like the look of the Heritage and you like something a little bit more modern, then obviously this is the one to go with. However, for me, I'm starting to question whether the soft tail line is going to give me what I need as a rider in Florida where there's no twisties. I have to ride 1200 miles to get to the mountains for my nearest twisties, which means I need to ride all day to get there. And perhaps a touring model like a street glide or a road glide would be better serving me and what my needs are for traveling around the state of Florida, which is primarily what I do. And then if I'm going long distance to Sturgis, I really would probably like to have something I can stretch out. And this lowrider ST with its controls, which are higher, any person that's six foot tall or taller, you're going to want to stretch out. Uh, Harley does not have a factory solution other than a mustache bar. Uh, the highway bar that they offer is not a bunking, so it sits up higher. So adding a bunking to this, you can stretch out a little bit, but it's still not the same as forward controls. So I got to struggle with that, and I'm going to be looking at a hard comparison between the lowrider ST and the street glide and the road glide moving forward. So those are my thoughts guys i suggest you go out there and ride that low rider st and see if it's for you and then if you're there at the dealership or a ride event go ahead and hop on a road glider street glide and give it a comparison have you ever wondered how a low rider s would perform with a 122 cubic inch stage 3 kit well click the box on the screen and i'll share that experience with you on my next video see you there oh nice. i want one man yeah. that's the ticket right there yeah. that's the way to go man Stage three. three yeah, the 122. Yeah. Where'd you go on my bike? Oh, I went around it twice. Oh, well, it's only one time, my friend. I know, I missed my turn. Oh. I'm Kenny Quest. Thanks for watching. If you like Harley Davidson products, the Harley Davidson lifestyle, follow my channel where I embark on a journey of a lifetime, diving headfirst into motorcycle culture, modifying my Harley Davidson motorcycles traveling and having a good time. If you like my vibe, I encourage you to subscribe. See you next time.